in chapter 3, Paul uh, sort of starts off by talking about why uh, they're, you know, they're, they've got credibility to do ministry there in Corinth. Remember, that was one of the issues that he dealt with, is some of the, some of the uh, leaders in Corinth or some of the Christians or almost Christians in Corinth uh, sort of challenged whether Paul really had authority. And so he talks a little bit about that at the beginning, but then he says this in verse 5, he says, it's not that we think we are qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualification comes from God. God has enabled us to be ministers of this new covenant. This is a covenant not of written laws, but of the Spirit. The old written covenant ends in death, but under the new covenant, the Spirit gives life. And this was a major emphasis for Paul in his writing, is just that how the Holy Spirit is is in our hearts as believers, and that's what empowers us and equips us and qualifies us to share the gospel, to live lives that that honor God, which is really pretty amazing because Paul was a Pharisee. You know, he had previously been a Pharisee. So this is a totally different attitude than the attitude of a Pharisee, someone who says, hey, I went to school for this. I'm really smart. I'm really trained. Uh, You should listen to me because of my pedigree. That is not Paul's attitude whatsoever in this letter or really in his ministry at all. And then he kind of transitions here and he starts explaining this new covenant, you know, instead of the old covenant, the covenant of the law and and this law, the rules and trying to be, be righteous by keeping the rules, which he talks about in Romans. He says, no, that, but that doesn't work. And he talks about this new covenant. That's all about Jesus and what he did on the cross and how he gives us the Holy spirit to live a new kind of life. And he says, Shouldn't we expect far greater glory under the new way, now that the Holy Spirit is giving life? If the old way, which brings condemnation, was glorious, and he, it was in the sense that, you know, when Moses received the Ten Commandments, his face was shining with the glory of God. So that's what he means when he says, if the old way was glorious, how much more glorious is the new way, which makes us right with God? So if if the laws were glorious and it showed how glorious and how incredible God was, how much more is this new way now that we, now that we can come to Christ and be forgiven of our sins and have the Holy Spirit alive in us, how much more glorious should that be? In other words, how much more radiant should that be when people see us after having met Christ and the Holy Spirit is now in us? Like that should radiate from our lives. Like like Moses' face was radiant with the glory of the Old Testament law. That's what he means here. So you can read that, but he says this, but whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. He's talking about how Moses had to sort of wear the veil over his face when he came down off the mountain because it was so, you know, the glory was so brilliant that that people couldn't, couldn't see it. So Moses had to wear this veil. And so now Paul's using that as a metaphor. And he's saying, it's almost like people who don't know Jesus have this veil over their face. Like they can't even see the glory of God. And he says, but when someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away, not just on, on their eyes, but but now it's almost like I don't have to cover up this. Like you can see in me the glory of God reflected to you by the way I live, by just the kind of a person I am, because the Spirit of God has changed me. And that's what he says in verse 17, for the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of God, right? Just like Moses was, when when the veil was taken off, you would have seen the glory of God reflected in Moses' face from the law. And now how much more, now that we have the spirit of God, how much more should we reflect the spirit and the fruit of the spirit in our lives? Love, joy, peace, patience, all those things. He says, so now the veil can be removed and people can see God in us. And we're, we're living examples and, and we're mi- little mirrors of Christ to the world around us. And he says, and the Lord, who is the spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. Man, what a, even though it's a short chapter, what a, what a powerful chapter when, it, when it's talking about Moses and the glory of God and the old covenant and the new covenant. So go ahead and read chapter three for yourself now and see how God is really wanting to do something new in you and in your life and in your world.